Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to another exciting exchange of ideas and insights in artistic practices. Therefore, I especially welcome with me on stage Claire Etherton. She's film editor from Paris and longtime collaborator of the late and unforgettable Chantal Ackermann. And Rania Stefan, artist and filmmaker based in Beirut. You might know her famous video portrait, The Three Disappearances of Soad Hosni from 2011, which, we'll always, which we will also discuss this afternoon. Um, the topic of this talk revolves around fluid identity. Just let me please explain a bit how I understand it in order that we can have a deeper uh, exchange uh, of ideas about this. Fluid identity in contrast to fixed identity is a more recent notion that is linked to the philosophical in inquiries of Judy Butler who ascertain the performativity of identities. It's also tied to the concept of Polish sociologist Sigmund Baumann, who wrote about the building of identities in the age of a liquid modernity that we're in right now, where everything is moving, unstable, precarious, and we all need to be flexible, adapting faster and faster to new economic, political, global, and personal situations. The question of fluid identity, of course, also wants to claim the right to change your identity, to have a deviant identity, and to have the freedom to live accordingly. With the recent developments in the US and the growing cultural tensions between world religions and ideologies, we know that we have to fight for this freedom again and again. I think this gives our discussion also a certain urgency. If you look at art, uh, for the concept or for the identity discourses, you can go back to the 60s and 70s, where it was very much tied to the representation of bodies. Body art was very strong, the expression of the sensations of bodies, the reclaiming of women's, women's bodies, the right to represent sexualities, and it often ended in the verdict of essentialism. The idea that identity was inextricably tied to the body, to a bodily essence, and therefore unchangeable. Representative for this position may be the art of Carolee Schneemann that lately got rediscovered and revaluated, and maybe also the early works from Marina Abramovic. The concentration on the body, of course, left out the question of the role of memories or emotional, cultural experiences in the forming of identities. And also, if you think it through, uh, the question remains, how can we, if we keep the right to form all our particular identities, how can we find, still find, make place for a common ground to talk about what we have in common, what may be universal in our very different identities and experiences. So that for me is a bit <laughs> the ground. So since the 70s, filmmaker Chantal Ackermann found new ways of addressing or suggesting identities, showing them as a mobile constellation or evasive constellation of uh, habits, imprints, stories, and histories. She was a beacon for feminist film and film theory, and once famously said, I don't make feminist films, I make Chantal Ackermann films. So Claire, you worked with her since 1984. What is a Chantal Ackermann film? Well, um, it's a difficult question, and so since it's the first question, maybe it's good to begin with the most difficult question. Um, a Chantal Ackerman film, uh, I would say it's, um, it's a film that creates a space for each of us to face ourselves and face the other and um, make us think. It's, uh, I think all her films have that in common, that it, uh, films that make us move and think. And my understanding of the fluidity of identity is um, quite a lot linked to this uh, issue of 
uh, movement and questioning all the time. And um, well, maybe uh, it's always difficult to uh, to. Uh, I know that we 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 plan to show a, um, extract of uh, a film, uh, her uh, latest and last film. Uh, it's always difficult to show uh, a little piece of Chantal's films because uh, one very important substance of Chantal's films is the relationship to time. And the time is um, part of this, um, is an active part of creating the space that she needs to uh, communicate with her audience. Um, well, maybe we just jump in and uh, have a look at the beginning of this last uh, film with the title No Home Movie. But just a few words, it's the beginning of the film, but the first shot that you'll see is very long in the film. It's, I don't remember how many minutes, but uh, more than four. And since we show a four minutes extract, you just have the, the end of the first shot. So we can talk about it later, but just to um, tell you. Il ne vient pas aujourd'hui. Il qui naît Non. Ce matin, euh, je dis demain.
for us who are maybe not uh, familiar with her work or this film, could you shortly explain what we see and why this film is not a home movie? Um, well, I, I'm not sure it's not a home movie. Um, in fact, um, the first title that Chantal wanted to give to the film is, was home movie. But since we thought that um, home movie was um, referring to the system that you have at home, you know, with the five speakers and so we say home cinema or home movie. And so some people told us it was a weird name because it made us think of that. And so she said, well, no home movie, it's even better because anyway, I don't have any home. So it's not that it's not, it's not a home movie, it's a no home movie. <laughs> But um, what's difficult and interesting also for me to see this, this, uh, this extract here today is that uh, Chantal's works is very much based on organic and emotional um, um, relationship to image and sound. And the first shot I told you is much more long in the film than it than in, in the piece that the, the, the extract we showed here. And so when you see the, 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 the beginning of the film with the whole length of the tree fighting against the wind and the sound very loud and you don't really hear it, you are in a, a, a state of, of tension very uh, uh, strong. It's like... Um, yeah, it's like if you 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 uh, something is uh, emptying you with this anger and this uh, wind and and so when you when you fall in the second shot, which is the green uh, field with the man sitting on the bench, you just feel something which is um, suddenly peaceful and something is happening in yourself that makes you um, ready to uh, meet um, uh, Chantal's mother who walks towards you. But when you see it like this, it's like, it's like if there is no tension because there is not this pushing moment at the beginning. So I'm, I'm really sorry, but I didn't, I didn't know how to, I, I said, I thought if I just show you the tree, it's, well, so I try to explain <laughs> to, uh, so duration is a key word, and uh, it's actually home. It's, it's filmed in the home of Chantal's mother. It's like two. We see her visit her two, twice, and then she dies. And the last visit we see in the film is when uh, Chantal Ackerman visits um, after the death. And it was actually a bit made like a home movie in the sense that she collected these images. And she didn't plan to make a film. No, that's true. Um, she's been filming her mother for uh, two years. I mean, at, at the time that uh, we did the film. And when her mother died, uh, we were supposed to work on an installation uh, um, that would be shown in Jerusalem, uh, which was called uh, De la Mer au Désert. So in English, it's from the mother to the desert. And uh, when I arrived, I mean, right before we had to meet, her, uh, Chantal's mother died. And then so when I arrived to work with her, she told me, she said to me, you know, I've been filming my mother for about two years, and I'd like to look at the images to the footage with you and see if we can make something. She didn't even say that she would make a film. She didn't know what it was. And then that's why I wanted to show you the beginning of the film is that we, we began to work on the editing of the film, but no, we didn't begin to work on the editing of the film. We began to look at all the images of Chantal's mother and you know, like if we wanted to stay with her and we were not in the process of creating, of creation, but only of, of staying with her and so we looked and looked and looked and then we put some images together and we arrived to a, like four hours film or but it wasn't a film we did we knew it wasn't a film but we needed this process and then when we all of a sudden decided to 
mix the two projects, the installation and the film, and to mix the images from the desert with the images of Chantal's mother, so the film was possible. And so it's the, when we did put the tree at the beginning, that's, that after we, have, we were able to edit. That means to, to choose and to open um, ways, I mean, uh, paths, and to cut and to, but before we, 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 we couldn't. I understand or I read somewhere that you had 40 hours in the beginning of film that you cut it down to about an hour. Uh, Rania Stefan, you had 82 films to begin with when you did your uh, three di disappearances of Suat Hasni. What kind of project was that and why also this portrait of a woman I mean, maybe the similarity is that uh, the, the whole project generated when Suat Husni died, and uh, it triggered a, a very strong emotion, you know, not only for me, but for a lot of people in the Arab world. And uh, since I had, uh, I was familiar with her work because I did my thesis on her uh, way back in Australia when I was studying cinema. When she died, I decided that I had to pay homage to her. I didn't want to do a kind of traditional documentary uh, asking people who knew her about her because the only person I wanted to know was her and she was absent, she was dead. So the second best thing was to go back and, and uh, inquire about the work, to have a look at the work. So I, I started to, to uh, see all the films and then this, uh, and decided that uh, the, the only possible film was just that she will tell her own story from the films. So this is how it started. And then I had to see all the work and, and uh, recreate this imaginary story, a uh, fictional documentary story out of the, the fiction. Maybe we have a look at your clip, please. this title, these three disappearances, when actually you got her rediscovered? Uh, because when I was uh, making the film, I, I realized that not only she has disappeared as an actress, but uh, a whole history of the cinema has disappeared with her. Also, the VHS as a vehicle of uh, uh, promoting her images was obsolete. So uh, it starts with three disappearances, but I'm sure like uh, the viewers would see other disappearances. How uh, is like the public memory of this famous Egyptian actress linked to your personal memory? How does it show in the film? Like the film is constructed on, on many different layers and uh, it, it, it mixes, li like there are some personal, uh, I, I know her personal biography, but I tried to build it within the film. So people who know her very well 
uh, can kind of uh, see the, the details of her personal story. But the main uh, project was to uh, kind of investigate or re uh, read the history of the Egyptian cinema through her films over a, a period of 30 years. So it's like looking at the films and, and asking myself, what does this, uh, these uh, films tell me about the cinema? So it's, it's totally about the persona. You know of Saad Hosni. It's it's it has like hints to her personal life, but it's uh, re rereading the fabrication of the cinematic persona, and for me, I was compelled, completely compelled to to uh, work around these images for many reasons. I mean, she's uh, for me, she's the one who brought me back to to Egyptian cinema. She kind of made me interested in my own culture again. So I always felt I owed her something. The other thing is that. As a cinema student, as a cinema, uh, even before I wanted to be a filmmaker, I was a cinema student. I'm, I'm completely like uh, uh, fabricated, or I'm completely like engulfed. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, for me, cinema is a way to see the world. It's, to, it's a way to comprehend the world. Is is my access to the world. So, uh, working with a cinematographic cinema person persona was it was a very important, uh, you know, statement about how I see the world myself and how I see my own culture. So, this this project crystallized a lot of elements uh, that 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 were like, uh, you know, like. Uh, uh, intrigue uh, that I was intrigued about. Also, the the um, uh, you know how how uh, what I discovered also is that when you reuse the image, when you reuse a, a, an archive, it it kind of channels a lot of emotions. So how do you put this emotion again in in a in a narrative you are constructing? You cannot uh, you know like you cannot discard a kind of um, uh, image that uh, hel holds within itself. An emotion that's channeled with time, you know. So we, ha I had, as an editor of my own film, think about this question anymore. So uh, also, so there are a lot of elements that um, I'm obsessed with, or that interest me, or that are, are are very essential to my work that were crystallized in this project. Another one was like the distinction, like the fine line between fiction and documentary. For me, it's blurred. There is no kind of uh, definition. So this, again, film, is it a documentary? Is it a fiction? It's my interpretation of the story. So what is it exactly? And using uh, fictional films to construct a real documentary about an actress, because in fact, the best uh, like document about an actress is her work. So what is it exactly? So all these elements are, you know, um, uh, channeled through this this project, and and they are all still. Uh, I'm still obsessed with them <laughs> until until now. But actually, we could say even though Suad Hosni was overexposed almost through all her films, and as a public persona, as a person, she remained an enigma. Is that would you say that, or did you can't get a better picture of her in the end? Like I, I got a good picture of her persona, you know, like but not of her as a, as a person. And I, I wanted to evade this question because I, I was not interested in the in the rumors around her. In, in like it's constructed around an absence again. And for me, like this, I'm 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 very much uh, kind of intrigued. And in my next film, this this kind of is is a big question: is is how at the same time. It's always this tension in cinema. I mean, somebody's absent, and you rep and and you kind of film them, and you reproduce their image, only to 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 realize that they are not there. You know, it's their image. So all this oscillation between presence and absence inside an image itself is something that I'm uh, completely compelled to. And in my other film, Memories for a Private Eye, is a completely central question in my work. How how do you do with an image of somebody who is absent? She's present and absent at the same time. It's a, a cinema is, is is an amazing way to 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 bring back death, to bring back absence. But at the same way, at I exactly the same time, it's an it's an evidence that the, the minute you see the image, you know that it's an image. It's not the real person. So you're you're again frustrated, <laughs> and and it's this uh, mystery that 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 completely uh, I I I haven't you know uh, got around. With it, all all the films I, I I do like still go around around this question. You know how how 
its absence and presence at the same time. Actually, this brings me back to uh, No Home Movie, uh, this structuring around an absence. Is this also true for No Home Movie? Yes, of course, yeah. It's, uh, uh, when Chantal presented the film in Locarno, I think she said um, that it's a, thing, uh, it's a film about loss. So, yes. Um, but at the same time, it's the, f the Chantal's movies are very much linked to uh, uh, her history, her mother's history, and uh, history with a capital H. Uh, this, this brings us, leads us back to fluidity of identity and fluidity of history also. As, uh, as to say that when you talk about yourself in a certain way and with a certain space around the discourse, it, you talk to um, everybody everywhere. Um, so um, it's, but it's the first time in, 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 in Chantal's films that her mother is really in the film. So yes, it's a film about an absence, but it's a film also about the presence and, and how uh, you were talking about memories also. And, but I think, um, um, well, it's, yeah, it's also how you can escape from memories. I mean, how can you try to, um, I think for Chantal, most of her films help her to, to do something with this history and maybe to try to forget, but, it, but to be, not, uh, not to be able to forget. So it's not we, it's more, yeah, it's more as they, the, uh, people said it in the symposium here in ba last, last year, it's more um, uh, the impossibility to forget than the, 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 you have to remember. I mean, and all the work of, of Chantal is based on, on this and on the fact that uh, what is an image and do you have the right to make an image? And I think that's the most important thing. And that's what it's an image, but it's not a representation. It's not an image in which meaning is locked. It's not an image in which a um, person is locked or is, you know, like if. Even when there are terrible characters in her films, like in her documentary South or From the Other Side, she films the sheriffs. And, and, and in, the two, in the both films, you, they, they interviews of the sher sheriff. South is, in, is um, taking place in the south of the United States. And From the Other Side is a Mexican frontier um, border. Uh, and. And the sheriff talks about horrible things and how uh, the, the, the people are led to lynch uh, um, a black, uh, I mean, he talks about death and murder and lynching, and, but he, he has his own dignity. Chantal films him with dignity. So that puts us, puts us um, face to face with this man as a human being and not only as a monster. You said that this, I mean, the first kind of absence in a whole movie is quite obvious. The mother really died. But then there's this other kind of absence that actually, you could say, inspired Chantal Ackerman for all her works, uh, namely the, that, she, that her mother, who was a Auschwitz survivor never talked about and uh, these experiences she had. So Chantal Ackermann um, once said that she had to invent these memories. So isn't this also this absence, this invention of that she had to invent the memories that uh, kind of nurture all her works? Yeah, but it's, yeah, maybe she had to invent, but I think she had to invent image more than memories. I mean, maybe she said it, but she's, it's, but 
It's the same. It's something I, I tried to say just earlier. It's also something she tried to escape from. And she also said that she was fed up with all this uh, kind of uh, uh, all this subject, and she wanted to talk about something else, and that she didn't want to 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 uh, uh, make films about that anymore, and that she would go somewhere else. But. You know, it's like if she tried to escape and things were were uh, rattrapé, uh, were uh, kept, yeah, get her. So uh, thank you. <laughs> um, what made you begin with this tree? Because uh, I know that you didn't like the word metaphor, for example. But for me, it was such a metaphoric image to begin with, and it was like her mother sustaining. Uh, against all these terrible things that happened to her, and she was so fragile at the same time and moving. So even though it was not a metaphor, why begin with this very strong image? When I say it's not a metaphor, it's not that I don't think that you should take it as a metaphor. It's just that it's not the way that we worked on it. Because um, it's like... Um, the way we were working is always very, very difficult to explain because it's... If you want to really know, we were working ab uh, on, the, on the images of, of, of her mother. And then we had some little parts of the film that we had worked on for the, uh, um, um, the travelings in the desert and some, some little parts. And, but we knew from the beginning that the tree was uh, a, a very, very important image. We had seen it a few times. Uh, and it was like you know, something that was there and very important. And all of a sudden, we said, we just begin with this and that's all. Just, it's like this, you can't, it, but it's never, we want to put the tree because it will let you, make you think that or, it's just, we put the tree and then all of a sudden the green bench and then the, the mother comes and we know it's right because, because the mother can appear. It was, we needed an image that could m help Chantal's mother to appear and to be an, a figure that would, that would um, talk to everyone. And Chantal used to say that this film was her mo most immediate film. In, in, this, in the meaning in French, immédiat, it means it comes quickly to you. I don't know if immediate in English has the same meaning exactly, but it comes really to you and very uh, easily. And she was hoping that it would, you know, that, that it would touch everyone because she said it was a very simple film. How was it with your film, with your video, uh, Rania? Did it also touch everyone, even though we don't know about Egypt film or Egypt actresses? It's difficult to, to uh, like uh, know like it, it, it the film went uh, had different publics it went a lot it, it, it circulated a lot I think the people were moved by uh, by her plight at the end because she she finishes in a very tragic way and um, it's quite po poignant um, to see this kind of fading beauty you know this very beautiful uh, uh, body going through hardship and then dying. It's very moving. Um, oh, but you picked all the scenes that are actually quite close to the, what she lived through also as a person. Le like uh, the structure of the, of the film is a tragedy. From the beginning I knew it was like uh, it had to be theatrical tragedy because she she uh, finished in a, in a quite a mysterious way in London. She. I think she she killed herself, but it's a kind of a, some people say she was killed. Uh, um, so since she died in a very violent way, I had to structure the film in a kind of a formal tragic tragedy. So it's like three acts. Uh, every act has scenes. Every scene brings something new to the scene before to construct this tragedy, w which ends with death. Uh, at the same time, it's it's she doesn't die because uh, really because it's the image of her. So she sees herself that dead, in fact, because she's still in in, in the image. So uh, it's it's a kind of a virtual, <laughs> like it's a symbolic death, but uh, it can repeat itself because we're still in the cinema. 
it's 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 about her persona from the beginning it's it's stated that it's about a persona it's it's not about the real uh, person so i i made it clear in the film that so in any case the the three acts had different paces different uh, ways of being edited even you know and the last uh, act which is quite a kind of uh, like a dreamy very dreamy you don't know if you're she's always like waking up from a nightmare and and uh, being in another nightmare you never it, it's an, an ever never ending nightmare so you don't know which dream ends and which dream begins until she dies so this idea uh, was also done in in a in a very uh, like uh, um, like like I had to 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 dive into the material and I knew where I was going but I didn't know how to get there and it was quite uh, by resonance that I edited you know I I it's a kind of very uh, physical <laughs> relation to the to the images they came like like a like a like in an automatic writing or something i knew the material very well i knew where i was going but i didn't know how to get there and this idea that she's constantly waking up to be in another dream to be in another dream until she dies and she sees herself dead it came as as a like I, I will use a, a word Claire uses, organic uh, way, you know? And, and this is why I, when I met uh, Claire in Beirut, I, I was very, uh, m I mean, uh, moved and interested by what she was saying because I did it without naming it. And when Claire did her master class in Beirut and she was like talking about it, I, 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 uh, it resonated. Uh, in, in my mind, it, it's kind of an organic relation to the image. It's not rational, L like you know very well the material. You 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 master your your story. You know where you're going, but somehow the image, the relation in the editing, is is quite or, is very organic and it, it keeps floating. It's it's not like something you apply to the image. You know, it's it's something very fragile and very uh, floating and and kind of uh, hesitant like this and and. Uh, I think one has to uh, have to keep this relation in order to keep the image alive. You know, you, you can't. Editing is the opposite of 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 of. You know, it, it's something very fine. You know, with relation to the image, it's 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 uh, precious. It's uh, I have fine. A, I have a question, if I may. No, because. Um, um, and I have a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because w it's true what you do. You say about intuition and not deciding before, because it's the the fact to uh, the process of making that makes things possible and images come and 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 which is what makes it quite difficult to talk about. But but at the same time, when I work with a filmmaker, I'm I I feel that ha I have. Um, I'm very much linked to the somehow the unconscious part of the creation of the filmmaker. And also, as we were talking with Kathleen right before the talk, uh, I, I really think that the, the intuition is not opposite to uh, thinking. If you can follow some uh, your intuition, it means that underneath uh, there is thinking. It's just that you don't follow a line saying I'm thinking about how do I want to say t s such and such things but you just receive the substance of the image and you try to see and r and, and and listen and understand or question what what's the meaning and what where are you going but my question was uh, since I'm What's leading me is something which is linked to an unconscious link between us, and especially with Chantal, but with with others too. I mean, it's always something that le that leads me. But there, you, it was very different for you because, first of all, you're alone, and secondly, the images they can't they are not shot for the film, and you could say. I'll leave you talking in a minute. But you could say that you, know, uh, uh, you could say that Chantal didn't film for a film either. But still, um, her way of filming, her, the, 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 her frames, uh, the distance, the, the noise, the, the way she talks to her mother, it, 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 you know, it's there. And it's even if it's not 
on the purpose of it's there and it leads you. And whereas you, you edited film uh, images that come from other films, so I thought it would very difficult. I mean, I, I, I have the reverse question now, but I, I'll answer first <laughs> because I have a, 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 like exactly the reverse question to ask you about the editing. But in relation to this, like it was a, a, a absolute like uh, uh, divine thrill. I mean, it, it, it's the best thing that uh, I could ever edit. It was to 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 uh, you know plunge into a cinema uh, archive and and. Uh, recycle it, you know, because like it's 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 as if I've always worked with Saad Husni all her life. <laughs> like, so, uh, what more can I uh, want? You know, like I wanted to do to make a film about her, and here I have all of her work. You know, like uh, I took it this way. It's not like I I needed to con to control even the filming of the image, but I had all this like Saad Husni material to to be able to work with. So it was absolutely like pleasurable completely to, to, to be able to work with cinema and, and to know how to deconstruct in order to reconstruct it. So it was uh, very thrilling. Uh, and like I said before, you know, you, you realize how much an image coming from another place is channeling uh, this kind of residue of emotion because it's crossing time. And when the image crosses time, even if you don't make it, it has this residue of emotion with time and space, you know? So it was interesting to, to realize it. And also the other thing is I thought that it's very interesting to, because it, it, it has this cinematic, you know, a, a classical cinema quality, um, I, I realized also that even though the film is quite, uh, it's not a classical narrative, it's, it's quite like, uh, it has layers, uh, lap, uh, lacks, uh, it, it, it's constructed like a, like a dream, you know, it, it has a lot of like, uh, it's not, not, not at all a classical narration. However, the emotion channeled uh, by the, the cinema image gave it a, another layer of, of emotion, you know? So I realized how strong cinema is in, in this, doing this film. But my question to you is that, uh, like working in this way, in this kind of very organic way with images, uh, like I understand that if you're doing a documentary because you have the leeway to construct, uh, to, to create the form, you know, you're not like, you're not determined by any narrative like in this film. But what happens uh, when you do it with a, in a fiction film? I mean, how, how can you uh, apply this, not apply, but, but have the same kind of relation with the image if, if you have a, a, history, a story, very determined story to, to say? Uh, uh, it's been no, I understand, but it's yeah, it's it's true. It's different because you have a, 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 a path, but also I have very 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 bad memory, so I never know. Uh, I read the script, but I don't know it by heart. So no, no, it's true. I mean, I'm always a little bit mixed up, and that helps. And I was tell telling Kathleen also that I know it was um, Eva that I get lost everywhere. I mean, I I don't I I never know in 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 a city where uh, if. In a city I don't know, I, I never find my way. And I think it's very important um, to, be in that, to, to, to be able to get lost when you're an editor. So I think that the, the, the fact that I don't have this sense of orientation helps me. And also I don't have this, this, this faculty of memorizing what, what will happen. So it's like if uh, you discover each time. Chantal was not like that at all. It was, we, were, we had very m many, many things in common, but she always knew. For example, she could say even um, the, her first, because sometimes we were using some sounds of her first films in installations, or and she could tell me, go and see Jeanne Dillman, and at one hour and twenty minutes there is this sound. I always, I, I just I, so, but it's it's a it's it's her brain that was like this. It's not that she's she wasn't organized at all in her everyday life, but she knew. I don't have that at all. Even when I'm in the process of editing, when I see the film, because you see film the film you're editing, you see it many times, and when I see it for the I don't know the the the, the tenth or twentieth time, sometimes I don't know what shot will come after. And sometimes I, I work with filmmakers, they, they know everything by heart, and they even think of the shots that are go going to come before they come, and then so they think before seeing. And that's, 
that's very difficult after to know what your feelings are. Chantal was not like this at all because she would, in the process of watching her films, she would forget. But she had this memory if she had to use it. So this faculty of forgetting and of uh, being lost is still it still exists in, in the future films. Uh, and also, um, you know, you can, when you edit, a, uh, it's, editing is linked to, it's, there, is, there are many layers. So it, there is this, this, this line that you're trying to build with this, this work on tension, on increasing tension, and then something goes down and everything. But also, but th th that's, that's also, it's made by time and it's made also by uh, the way that you edit some sequences. So you can follow your intuition saying, well, I, I don't want to uh, do too much of a, a cutting, you know, and I leave the sequence in its, in it, in its, its uh, length like this. And then, you know, it's, you always have choices anyway, even, just, even though, and then you can take out, out some scenes and you can even sometimes you put one scene before another or... Because documentary is, is, is such a freedom, you know, because you can, you can reshape everything you, the way you want. And it's yes, but I, yes, it's freedom, but it's also... It's, I don't know, I have the feeling I have just to find, but it's not that everything is possible. It's just that you have to find the right, and you know, it's like, it's like if you see a light, but you don't really know where it is, and, and, you, and you go and you get closer and closer. And so I don't feel this freedom as being like, I can do whatever you, I want, and so what's the choice? It's just, but how did you communicate before, you know, actually that where you want to go a bit with the material? How, how do you, you and Chantal Ackerman, how did you speak to each other to know where it's going or it's heading or where the possibilities uh, lie in this sculpting out of the film? It, uh, it's... You didn't need to? Yes, sometimes. Uh, yes, it's true that um, many times I would just try and, and show her. And, and we would, I mean, show us. Because when I try, I'm not sure about what I do. And when we discover the, the, the editing, uh, I mean, the, 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 the beginning of a film or the, 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 the editing of five or, or, or six shots, uh, we feel something and we know if it's right or not. So sometimes it's just like I try and then we look. But sometimes also it's just like when I, when I told you about the tree, why, why wouldn't we put the tree at the beginning? And then we try and it was the right choice, but could have been the wrong and we would say no. So maybe we should try to put it like in 10 minutes. So how could we begin? And you know, just like that. And it comes, and then you see when it's right. You see when it's right. That's the most important thing. Wow. So <laughs> um, I'm, I might wonder if you have any questions to ask these two. Yes, please. Oh, I think a microphone is just coming. Hi. Yes. Hi, uh, I'm from Beirut. <laughs> And uh, I really like uh, your conversation. Uh, my question is to Rania. I, I really like your film, but uh, since we just had a short trailer, um, I'm curious to know that, um, let's get to uh, start with the uh, title of the uh, conversation, Fluidity and Identity. What kind of identity that you wanted to highlight or to, to, speci to, like, to communicate to the audience uh, was it about Suat Husni as an actress, or was it about Suat Husni as a, a woman from the Middle East that can be inspiring for others and to, to shed the light on different aspects of her uh, personality and her life and maybe her political stance and, uh, you know, different aspects of her life? Or was it like just to narrate uh, her death, the tragedy of her death? So I'm curious to know where did you focus on mostly? 
like it, it wasn't uh, like a plan, you know, like uh, what, what, uh, first of all, it was a, a, a kind of very strong uh, desire to pay homage to somebody's work. Because like I said before, she was very important in my realization that uh, like my, my, my relation to my own culture. So uh, for, f yeah, I always felt I, I owed her something, you know, it's, it's like a debt. But when I w when I looked at the films, like it's it's like 82 feature movies uh, from over 30 years of cinema, so it's not like uh, I want to do this. It's it's more the other way around. What does this body of work tell me about uh, about the history? What does this body of work tell me about the representation of women? What does this body of work tell me about how they used to make movies? What does this body of work tell me about? Uh, how, how do we represent uh, first love, a relation between girls and boys, re revolutions, you know, all these, uh, you know, like, I, I wanted to reread this history through only her films. This is how the film started. Then I, I, I knew that it's a tragedy, so I wanted to build it in, in acts. This is how it was. But it's not like a, 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 a concept that I applied on the film. It's more coming from the material, and uh, uh, trying to read this material and, and to extract from the material, like uh, kind of reread the material and try to tell the story of it. It's, it's more the other way around. Always from the material. <laughs> I think there are no other questions. Would you like to add something? So everything is very, very clear. <laughs> Do it way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know if these films are screened anywhere in the Art Basel this year. No. I'm afraid, not that I know of. Yeah, where can we see them? Has <laughs> 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 Saad Hosni been screened in Egypt? Yeah, yeah, it's been screened in Egypt. What was mm -hmm. the reaction? I was very surprised that they really liked it because I think like, usually with, uh, like Egyptians are, are quite uh, uh, particular about their own culture and, and they, they, they kind of uh, are sometimes dubious about other people uh, talking, I mean, uh, talking about their own culture. But I think the film um, is a labor of love. So I, I, I think they liked it as, as, uh, as a homage to, to this icon. I wanted to add something, uh, maybe uh, also uh, Claire has something to do, because we, we were talking about the unconscious, like the, the, the whole of, um, b because I think that, you know, the, the whole narrative of the film is a dead person is remembering her life, you know, and then uh, the, 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 the scratches are like uh, the glitches in her memory, and, and the whole film started like, like this. I find it very, uh, there is a lot of uh, relation between editing and, and dreaming, you know, there is, there is a, and, and so I tried in the film also to use uh, like the, 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 the tools of dreaming in, in the editing. So uh, like the condensation, the, the repetition, the, the kind of, uh, like when, when there is a uh, dissociation between the image and the sound. Do you, do you uh, use these tools too? I mean, do you uh, think about that? N not really, not, not as, uh, as you, you uh, describe it, but, but sometimes you, um, uh, w when you are looking for I mean, listening to your intuition and 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 trying to understand what you should do, you you. I mean, I have the feeling I'm dreaming, which is quite different. But <laughs> but it's like if things come to you because you're in a certain uh, state of mind, which is open to uh, to this process, the kind of process. I think the state of mind and the, the way you are ready to receive are the most important things. And this is maybe also closer to dreaming, intuitive yes, yes, that's thinking. That yeah. 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 Something yeah. like yeah. Awake, yeah. awake and dream, you know, it's, it's a f kind of a f half awake of sleeping. 
Just to answer your question, where to get these films, actually there are many works of Chantal Ackermann that you find on DVD, so you can find them uh, in the internet. Um, I, I have them on Vimeo with the pass, passwords, but you have to <laughs> get in touch with me. I, they're not in a commercial circuit. <laughs> They are in the, the public, uh, they, they are in a library in Beirut in Ashkel Alwan, uh, free access also, a public library. <laughs> you have to come to Beirut. So, I want to, yeah, there's another question, sorry. There is a question. <laughs> um, I was wondering whether the way that you edit and uh, go on in your films and catching and grasping realities on fluidity of identity is, um, I mean, would you, would you uh, see it as a phenomenological more? Is it uh, grasping, let's say, uh, kaleidoscopical uh, aspects of uh, a narrative of life? Is life phenomenological as well? Is there anything solid, anything stable, anything um, permanent in a row of uh, uh, sequences, image sequences, or experience sequences? You asking uh, Rania Stefan or Claire Atherton? Both, if I may, because I, I, I think that your take on uh, cinematic uh, narratives is um, a bit similar. So, you know, at the meeting I mean, point, at the meeting point, is there, what is the graspable, what is the permanence in any type of fluidity of identity or narrative? Look, I, I don't know if I, I can... Uh, there is, uh, if I have a clear answer, but I, I, what I know is that, um, again, like, like, there is, it, it's not an applied uh, process, you know, when, for me, in, in, in any case, as a filmmaker, if, if, if I have an idea or if I have a, it's, it's not, I'm applying an idea, you know, it's, it's, it is uh, the material that has to reveal itself. So, uh, like in, in the last film I did, which is called Memories for a Private Eye, I mix um, like uh, my own history, like archival images of my, my, uh, my, my own with, with the fiction. And I try to, to, to let uh, like fictional elements narrate my own history. It was like a, a, another way of uh, kind of weaving between, uh, or, or it was a trick for me to, to be able to address some traumatic experience, uh, family history to, to, to bring about a, a kind of uh, a fictional element in it. So it's, it's never, I think, a concept, and I apply it on the film, you know, you, you are, I am compelled to do something. I, I have to find the ways and the images and the means to do it. And then when I have the elements, I have to dig into the material and discover myself in, in, a, in a kind of a moment full of doubt and hesitations and... Uh, uh, silence and and uh, thing about how the film will be. It it it's it's not a you know like an applied concept. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I'm not really sure I understood the whole your really <coughs> your question, but it, it, I so. But what I can say, you you tell me if it's the right answer. But it's because you was you were saying that about fluidity of identity, you were asking if um, something was um, um, stable, is, is that right? And I don't, excuse me? If anything. If anything. But I think what, you, what, what is, what, I don't know if anything is stable, but I know that what exists is the thinking. And and since if if you work with this um, uh, to, uh, being very careful to uh, a big attention to time and space and emptiness, so uh, you work on this fluidity 
that's the way I understand the word fluidity. And then, and then that's what makes the thinking possible and the thinking uh, and, the, and the film or the art piece can be seen in many places and many times differently and that makes it live. So I don't know if it's stable, but it exists. I can I can add something. It's that, and and for me as a filmmaker and an editor of my own films, it always has to be a kind of very uh, strong impulse to make it. Uh, like there is an idea that is kind of lurking, and you try to 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 do it materially, and then you have to come back to the material to find the shape, and then within this process you 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 find the shape, and then you you. Uh, Make a film with rith with the rhythm, you know, that you shape with the rhythm of the image and the sound, and then it exists as as an as a, as a as an entity. And just to to and I know we have to finish uh, soon, but just to to um, add a little thing to make the link between what we say, what we both say, is that I'm I'm sure that the process of creating is linked to the creation itself. So if you, during the process, if you are open and that you don't uh, uh, close images in meanings and that you leave things moving and living, so the film will be moving and living and so it can be seen, like uh, as I said, and it can talk to each of you. But if you close in the process, so it's, so, so Hanya answered more about the process. I answer more about what I thought was the fluidity question, but it's linked both. I think this is a wonderful closing remark. I thank you both very much for this engaging and engaged discussion. I thank you also, and I wish us all a wonderful evening. Thank you.